we have been learning about civilizations in ancient India. In our last lesson, we learned about Hinduism, the third largest religion in the world, and one that is practiced widely in India. In Hinduism, there are priests that are called Brahmins. We've heard the word Brahmin before. Remember, Brahmin is the spiritual force that, that Hindus believe is the source of all existence or life, and all of the Hindu gods and goddesses together represent Brahmin. Take a minute to think, why do you think a Hindu priest would be called a Brahmin? Priests or religious leaders are like Hindu gods and goddesses are very spiritual. Today, we are going to read a folk tale from India. A folk tale is a story that someone made up long, long ago that has been told again and again. This tale is also a trickster tale. A trickster is a character that tr tricks another character. In our fairy tale, The Emperor's New Clothes, the swindlers were tricksters. In this trickster tale, there are three characters, a tiger, a jackal, which is a wild dog-like animal, and a Brahmin or Hindu priest. Before we read our story, let's go over some of our vocabulary words. Our first word is contrary. If something is contrary, that means that it is the opposite of what was said or done earlier. Manuel was sure that his sister made a mistake, but on the contrary, her homework was completed correctly. Distracted. Distracted means unable to focus or concentrate on something. For example, Olivia had a hard time finishing her homework because she was distracted by all of the noise around her. Devour. To devour something is to eat it very quickly or to gobble it up. For example, when I feed my dog his dinner, he will usually devour it in just a few minutes. Pious. Pious means religious or spiritual. For example, Trudy's grandmother was a pious woman who prayed many times a day. Unjust. Unjust means not right or unfair. For example, Ben thought, thought that it was unjust that his sister got to go to the movies and he didn't. Take a minute to think about a situation that you have been in that you felt was unjust. In the word unjust, we hear the root word just and the prefix un. A prefix is a set of letters attached to the beginning of a word that changes the meaning of the word. The word just means fair. The prefix un means not. When added to the word just, it means not right or not fair. I'm going to say several pairs of words to you, the second of which contains the prefix un. As I say each set, I want you to pause and think about how the prefix un changes the meanings of the root word. Let's do our first one cooked and uncooked. Uncooked means not cooked. Harmed and unharmed. Happy and unhappy. Remarkable and unremarkable. Changed and unchanged. Once upon a time, a tiger was caught in a trap. 
He clawed and gnawed at the bars of his cage, but he could not escape. While the tiger was struggling to escape, a Hindu holy man happened to pass by. The tiger called out to the holy man, O oh, pious Brahmin, help me. So remember, the word pious means religious or devoted to one's religion. A Brahmin is a Hindu priest. Let me out of this cage, the tiger cried. Now, the Brahmin believed in being kind and gentle to everyone he met, and it was part of his religion to treat animals like brothers. But at the same time, he saw the danger of letting the tiger out. Why should I let you out? asked the Brahmin. If I do, you will probably eat me. Oh, no, no, said the tiger. I swear I won't do that. On the contrary, I will be forever grateful to you and serve you forever. So on the contrary means, on the, means the opposite of what was said before. So the Brahmin said that the tiger would probably eat him. And the tiger is insisting that that is contrary, that he will not eat him. The tiger sobbed and sighed and wept so piteously that the pious Brahmin's heart softened, and at last he agreed to open the door of the cage. As soon as he was out of the cage, the tiger pounced on the Brahmin. What a silly man you are, said the tiger. What is to prevent me from eating you now? Nothing, said the Brahmin, nothing at all. But, Brother Tiger, consider what it is you are about to do. Isn't it unjust to eat me when I have done you a good turn by letting you out of the cage? Do you think it is fair to eat me up when you promised me that you would not do so? It is perfectly fair, said the tiger. Ask anyone, and they will tell you that this is the way of the world. Will they, said the Brahmin? Suppose we ask them the next three things we see. Will they agree that it is fair for you to eat me? Now, there happened to be an old buffalo standing a little way off by the side of the road. The Brahmin called out to him, Brother Buffalo, what do you think? Is it fair for Brother Tiger here to devour me when I have freed him from his cage? Is it just or fair? for him to eat me when he has promised not to do so? When I was young and strong, said the buffalo in a hoarse, tired voice, I served my master well. I carried heavy loads and carried them far. But now that I am old and weak, how does he reward me for my years of service? He leaves me here by the side of the road without food or water. I say, let the tiger eat the Brahmin for these men are an ungrateful bunch. Aha, said the tiger, you see that the buffalo's judgment is against you. Did that buffalo give the Brahmin any sympathy? Does the mistreated buffalo think that the tiger is being unjust? Indeed it is, said the Brahmin. But let us hear a second opinion. All right, friends, remind me, what does the word unjust mean? All right, let's see who they ask next. A few yards away, there was an ancient banyan tree that cast a shadow on the road. Brother Banyan, said the Brahmin, what do you think? Is it fair for Brother Tiger here to eat me when I have freed him from his cage? Is it just for him to do this when he promised he would not? The banyan tree looked down and sighed. In the summer, said the banyan tree, when it is hot, men take shelter from the sun in the shade that I supply. But when the sun goes down, they break off my branches and burn them in their fires. I say, let the tiger eat the Brahmin, for these men are selfish and think only of themselves. Did the tree give the Brahmin any sympathy? Does the tree think that the tiger is being unjust? 
You see that the banyan tree agrees with a buffalo, the tiger said. Indeed he does, said the Brahmin. But let us hear one more opinion. The Brahmin looked down the road and spotted a jackal jogging along the edge of the woods. Remember, a jackal is a wild, dog-like animal. Brother Jackal, he called out. What do you think? Is it fair for Brother Tiger here to eat me when I have freed him from his cage? I'm sorry, said the jackal. I'm afraid I don't quite understand. Would you mind explaining exactly what happened? The Brahmin explained what had happened. He told the whole story from start to finish. When he was, was done, the jackal just shook his head in a distracted sort of way, as if he still did not quite understand. It's very odd, he said. I hear what you are saying, but I can't seem to understand it. It all seems to go in one ear and out at the other. Could you take me to the place where all of this happened? If I can see where these things happened, Perhaps I will be able to understand what exactly took place. Then I can give you my opinion. So the Brahmin led the jackal back to the cage, with the tiger trailing along behind them, licking his chops in anticipation of a tasty meal. So this is the cage, said the jackal. Yes, said the Brahmin. And what happened exactly? The Brahmin told the whole story over again, not missing a single detail. Oh, my poor brain, cried the jackal, wringing its paws. Let me see, how did it all begin? You were in the cage, and the tiger came walking by. Pooh, interrupted the tiger. What a fool you are. I was the one in the cage. Of course, cried the jackal. That is very helpful. So let's see, I was in the cage. But wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. I was never in the cage, was I? Let me see. The tiger was in the Brahmin, and the cage came walking by. No, that's not it either. Oh dear, I fear I shall never understand. You are not listening to me, roared the tiger. It's so simple. Look here, I am the tiger. Yes, my lord. And that is the Brahmin. Yes, my lord. And that is the cage. Yes, my lord. And I was in the cage. Do you understand? Yes, no, please, my lord. Well, cried the tiger impatiently. Excuse me, my lord, but how did you get in? How? Why, in the usual way, of course. Oh, dear me, I'm getting confused again. Please don't be angry, my lord. But what is the usual way? At this, the tiger lost his patience. He ran into the cage, bellowing, This way! Now do you understand how it was? I think I'm beginning to understand, said the jackal. But why did you not let yourself out? Because the gate was closed, moaned the tiger. This gate, said the jackal. Yes, roared the tiger. Then the jackal gave the gate a little nudge, and it swung closed with a clicking sound. And that clicking sound? asked the jackal. What does that mean? That means that the cage is locked, said the brahmin. Does it? said the jackal. Does it really? Well, in that case, brother brahmin, I would advise you to leave it locked. And as for you, my friend, he said to the tiger, I suspect it will be a good while before you can find anyone to let you out again. Then the jackal made a little bow to the brahmin and went on his way. That's the end of our story, friends. Was the jackal really as foolish as the tiger thought he was? Why do you think so? All right, my friends, now that we are done with that story, I've got some questions for you. My first question is, in this story, 
The Brahmin went to a buffalo, a tree, and a jackal to ask them if they thought that the tiger's decision to eat him was just or unjust. What did those three animals say? Did they think it was just or unjust? They didn't all say the same thing. The buffalo and the tree thought that it was just, but the jackal didn't give a, a, reason, an, a direct answer or a reason. He pretended not to understand. Why do you think that the buffalo and the tree thought that it was just for the tiger to eat the Brahmin? You're right. They had been mistreated by people in the past, and they had been hurt by those people. They believed that it was okay for the tiger to mistreat the Brahmin because of the way that they were mistreated. We talked about how this is a trickster tale. Who was the trickster in this tale, and who did he trick? Our trickster was the jackal, and the jackal tricked the tiger. He helped the Brahmin in the end by tricking the tiger. Is this trick trickster tale fiction or non-fiction? Remember, fiction is something that's not true, and non-fiction is something that is true or factual. This one is fiction. We know it's not, we know that it is fiction because there are some things that happen in the story that cannot happen in real life, like a tree or a buffalo or a tiger or a jackal talking. What country is this, is the setting of this trickster tale? Remember, the setting is where it takes place. So what country does this tale take place in? It takes place in India. I never said it took place in India. I didn't say that anywhere in the tale. How, how do you know that that took place in India? What are some clues that might let you know? The Brahmin was a Hindu priest and Hindu, Hinduism was most widely practiced in India. So that could be a good clue. All right, for this last one, I want you to turn to your friend or neighbor or sibling, whoever is there with you, and talk about this one. This one, I'm not going to ask you a question. You are going to ask a question for this one. I want you to think of a question that you can ask the person sitting there with you that starts with the word who. So you might say, who let the tiger out of the cage? Turn to your neighbor and ask your who question and have them ask a who question to you. All right, my friends, when you are done talking to your neighbor, I'm going to have you pull up the PDF that is attached to this assignment. I'm going to jump on my screen so I can show you what to do on that assignment. Okay, when you open that PDF, just like with our map, the pictures will be facing the wrong direction. So the first thing we want to do is click on these three bars up in the top right hand corner that say menu. And we're going to rotate. This will make it easier on you to complete this assignment. In this assignment, we are going to work on sequencing. Sequencing means putting things in the correct order that they happened. On this paper, we have six pictures of things that happened in the story we read today. Your job is to tell me what order those things, those six things happened in our story. So I know how we're going to do that, sorry, is we are going to number them. We're going to number them and we're going to put them in the correct order. 
let's look at those pictures. In this first picture, I see the tiger attacking the Brahmin. In the second one, I see the Brahmin and the jackal talking to the tiger in the cage. In this third one, I see the Brahmin talking to the mm -hmm. buffalo. In this one, I see the Brahmin talking to the jackal. Here, he's talking to the tree. And in this first picture, he's looking at the tiger in the cage, and our tiger is looking very sad. I'm going to look at those pictures. I want you to look at them with me and think about which of those six things happened very first in our story. You've got it. The very first thing that happened in our story was that the Brahmin came upon the tiger locked in the cage and he felt sorry for him. You can use a text box on this one if you like. I'm going to use the drawing tool. If you choose to use the drawing tool, make sure that you pick a color. If it's in black, we might not be able to see it quite as well. I'll use red for today. Because this was the first, this picture is the first thing that happened in the story, I'm going to draw or write a number one in the top corner. Then I'm going to look and see if I can find a picture that shows what happened next. Did he talk to the tree right after that? Did he come back with the jackal? Did he talk to the jackal? You're right. What happened next was the tiger attacked him. I'm going to write a number two in the top corner of that image. All right, my friends, your job is to look at the, oh, didn't mean to do that, sorry, friends. You're going to look at the rest of those images and tell me what order they happened in. So after the tiger attacked the Brahmin, you'll write a number three in the photo that shows what happened next, all the way to number six. When you are done with that one, when you have a number in the corner of each of these pictures, go ahead and turn it in in the top right hand corner. And that is all you have to do for today.